name is uh, Eric Maddox. I'm a graduate student at the University of Colorado, and uh, I'd like to speak to you today about some research I did on uh, machine-mediated remote viewing. Um, my interest in this was really the data in remote viewing. If, if you have a target that's here in, in, at a location in time, and then you have a remote viewer, which is over here, my interest is in this middle section. That, that's what was really motivating me to, uh, to do this. This is my favorite definition for remote viewing. This actually comes from Ingo Swan. Uh, remote viewing provides information about things and situations distant in space and time from local surroundings. Uh, I, I think this is the best definition that, that I've uh, come across. Initial remote viewing research, modern remote viewing research, uh, was done at SRI in the early 70s. Um, they really codified remote viewing and came up with a protocol to follow to get accurate results and repeatable results. Um, this was funded by the Central Intelligence Agency because they saw it as a means of being able to gather information uh, about uh, enemies of the country. This was later handed off to the T Defense Intelligence Agency where you get these buzzword project names like Stargate, which everybody uh, has heard about who looks into remote viewing. Um, this program bounced around a lot, ended up bouncing to SIAIC in the 90s, uh, who continued the research in remote viewing. Uh, um, the, the output uh, of this was good protocols um, for following to get accurate results. And there was an investigation that was done by the Central Intelligence Agency. They actually hired um, a, a group of scientists to study the remote viewing data. And they said, you know, we, we want you to look at this. And we want you to make it an, an honest uh, evaluation. After many months of uh, research, the ultimate output in the, in the report was that there is a significant amount of uh, accurate data being collected in these recent remote viewing experiments. Even though that was the ultimate output of this uh, investigation into remote viewing, the program was defunded. Really, the CAA wanted an excuse to defund it. Um, so this was just kind of, they tried to use this as the reason, but it didn't, doesn't really hold up logically. The machine in my machine media remote viewing are random number generators. Um, random number generators are simple machines that output random sequences of ones and zeros. They're sometimes called electronic coin flippers because you get one output or another completely randomly. Um, random number generator research has been going on for quite some time. Um, Helmut Schmidt did some of the early research. He did his in the late 60s and early 70s. Um, Here's a picture of one of his machines that he used in his research where he hooked up a random number generator to a bank of four lights. And he used this to try and get people to judge which light was going to be lit up by the random number generator. Later on in the 90s, uh, Pair Research Labs did a meta-analysis of random number generator data and they came to two very important conclusions. Uh, one, random number generator's output are, is completely random. And two, those random number generators' outputs do deviate from random when they're involved in psi experiments. So because of this, this is why I really wanted to use a random number generator as the machine in my experiments. <clears throat> uh, this is the, a picture of the machine I use. It's a Cyleron uh, random number generator. It's a small metallic case, uh, about the size of a deck of cards, roughly. Um, it's very inobtrusive uh, and easy to use. Uh, it should be noted that these random number generators are protected in that they are not influenced by electromagnetic interference, RF radiation, or even thermal uh, emissions. So they're very stable. My experimental objective was I proposed that remote viewing could be carried out using human subjects um, who are unconsciously producing images via a local random number generator. Now, my procedures for my experiment were kind of twofold. I had two different groups that I ran this experiment on. The first group was what I call non-experienced. This comprised primarily of engineering students at the University of uh, Colorado. And to say they were skeptical is an understatement. They did not believe in this at all. Uh, but they volunteered, I appreciated, and they went through the experiment. The second group is experienced. Now by this, I mean I had self-reported psychics, people with spirit guides that gave them answers, um, professional remote viewers, they do this for a living. So that was my second group. Now in my experiment I had two unique procedures. The first one being a standard or typical 
<coughs> remote viewing procedure where there's a target and the person would remote view that target to get the information about it. The second procedure, is, I, I term psychokinesis. Really, at that point, I had the, the person get a target and then they were able to see and look at that target and then I wanted them to project that information out there. Um, so those are the two sides of my, my uh, little equation. All of the targets in my experiment were Zener cards. Um, all of the data that I collected um, that I considered real important came from the Cyleron random number generator, which was collecting data while the experiment was taking place. Um, for the judging of images at the end of the experiment, uh, we used the SRI system, I'll explain that a little more later, um, to judge the drawings versus uh, the Zener cards. And it should be noted that no feedback was given to the participants during this experiment. Um, this is a, a real simple diagram of the experimental setup. Um, it was a conference room which was private, you could close the doors. Uh, the subject sat on one side of the table, the experimenter sat on the other. The experiment, experimenter had access to a laptop computer which ran the random number generator and collected the data. Um, the subject was never able to see the computer itself and many of them didn't really care. Uh, of all the subjects that were tested, only one person asked what that little box was on the table. He says, what's that? And I said, oh, well, that's a device for collecting data. And they go, okay, and everything was fine. So nobody seemed to care that the random number generator was right there. Um, in this room, IRB consent forms, that's the Investigational Review Board, that's the uh, entity at the college that protects the rights of people taking part in the experiments, um, was gone over. Any questions were answered that the participants had. And then the experimental procedures were explained and the experiment began. The first procedure is remote viewing. Uh, very first step, the subject has to randomly select the target. Now there were 25 sealed envelopes. Each one of those contained a Zener card. The experimenter knew that the target was a Zener card, but he did not know which Zener card was in there. So it was both parties were unaware. The, it should be noted the, the person doing the remote viewing, they had no idea what the targets were. They just say, yeah, there's a target, there's a picture in there of a, of a location or object, we want you to describe it. The participant was then given two minutes. During that two minutes, the participant made hand drawings or wrote down a description of what they thought that target was. Um, during that two minutes time, the random numbers were being collected with the Cyleron uh, random number generator. For procedure two, the psychokinesis experiment person has to select a, a target. Now this is where it's slightly different. At this point, this person was allowed to open that card, the envelope, and take the card out. And we were real specific, say, we open the card, take it out, do not show the experimenter. We want you to look at the card. And for one minute's time, we want you to concentrate on that card. Focus on it. We want you to look at it and draw it over and over again in your head. And so everybody said, oh, okay. Um, and during that time, the numbers were collected from the random number generator. Now I need to explain to you how we created images with these uh, strings of random numbers. Up at the top, I have some sample data from the random number generator. So it's essentially it's a string of ones and zeros. These strings of data then were taken and they were turned into a rasterized image. I would take the first 100 bits of data and I would assign them to these bit locations here on this map. So in location one, if the number was a one, I put a dot there, I filled in that hole. If it was a zero, I left it blank. I did this for all of these locations. So those first 100 bits would create this very crude, rough image. For every session that I did, there's roughly 50,000 bits of data. Um, that's a lot of images. I mean, it's several hundred images per session. And because there were so many images, we had to have a way of paring that down to something we could analyze easily. <clears throat> this is the uh, averaging algorithm that we used. We took these hundreds of images and then we looked at every specific location and then we created an average for that location. Um, if that average number was less than five, well, that was a zero and that position was left blank. If that average uh, was greater than 0.5, then we put a dot there. And so we created an average image from these hundreds of images that we created, and that final average image is what we actually used when we did our judging. The image judging itself, um, we judged both the remote viewing and the PK images. We used the SRI ranking system. 
which for a forced choice um, ranking, we had ranks of one through five. Um, we knew what the targets were, they were the Zener cards. So we would give a score of five if the image looked the most like the target. A score of one if it looked the least like the target. So we had this nice little range of numbers. <clears throat> and it should be noted, all of judging was done after all of the data was collected. So this was like kind of like the final step was the judging. Here's an example. On the left hand side we have the subject hand drawing during a remote viewing session. And then on the right hand side we have the averaged image that was created from the random number generator. And in the center we have the targets. The judging, judges looked at this and made their decision. You can see here, both of these images, the judges say, hey, you know, this looks the most like wavy lines, so they give it a score of five. And then on down, um, the judging is not exactly the same for the two images, but you can see here for the most alike, they, they both agreed that it was wavy lines. These are the locations that the judges saw these wavy lines. We say, oh yeah, I see wavy lines. This is where I see it. And when we actually finally looked at the results, the target was the wavy line. So this would be considered a, a strong hit. In the second example, we looked at these two drawings, we made our judgments. Here, the judgments are slightly different. Uh, for the hand-drawn image, we thought it looked most like the square. And for the uh, random number generator generated image, we thought it looked more like a cross. Here's those images that we saw that we used for judging. And when we finally got the target, it was a cross. Now, these are both hits, but the random number generator produced image, that was a stronger hit, it had a score of five, so it was a stronger hit than the score of four we had for the uh, hand-drawn image. Third example, I like this one because it's a little more, dis more disparity. For here, the hand-drawn image, we said this looks like a circle. This is, this is a strong circle. Whereas on the generated image, we said this looks like wavy lines. Here, I mean, here's the locations that we made these judgments for. These are very different in, in judging between these two. When we finally got the targets, it was wavy lines. So this would be a complete miss on the hand-drawn image, but a strong hit on the random number generated image. So this will be fun. Here's an example. By a show of hands, who thinks, who sees a star most likely in this image? Okay. Who sees a square? How about wavy lines? All right. How about a circle? OK. Well, let's take a look at what, this, what the judges saw. The judges saw this as wavy, wavy lines. They saw that that was the strongest, followed by circle, star, cross, and uh, square. When you look at what the actual target was, well, there's, there's what the judges saw. Target was wavy lines. So everybody raised their hand on wavy lines, which, by the way, was the majority of the people that raised their hand in this room. You were correct. <laughs> that, that's the, the way the judges were. That's what the target actually was. Let's do uh, an example with the hand-drawn image. Who sees a circle? Uh, surprise, yeah. Okay. <laughs> How about a cross? Wavy lines? Uh, square? And star? All right. Of course, the judges, when they saw it, they saw the circle too, like most everybody did here. Um, they then saw a star, and the people that didn't look around, by far, everybody raised their hand with round. The second most, which we had three people raise their hand, was star, um, and then down with the other ones. So this is what the judges saw. That's what the target was. So even in this room, the judging is very similar to the way the judges judge these images, um, which is good. Um, real quick, this is how I determine statistical significance um, for uh, the, after we judged all the images. I don't want to go into the math. Let's uh, look at these different groups. Now, group one was the inexperienced group, primarily the engineering students. Um, this is all of the data collected. Of that, the majority of this was not significant. However, we did find significance in the raster remote viewed rasterized images, and especially when we combined the remote viewing and the PK images, we definitely found strong significance. Um, 
for uh, hits. In group two, the experienced group, this is the uh, professional psychics, professional remote viewers, people with experience with psi. They were primarily insignificant. They didn't really do so well. Um, they, there was one area of significance, and uh, this is when we combined the RV and the PK. In analysis, significant results supports our hypothesis that remote viewing can be done and carried out by humans unconsciously producing these images with the RNG data. Some interesting observations, when you compare the hand-drawn images to the rasterized images, um, a couple questions pop up. Uh, was some aspect of the hand drawings inhibiting psi, or were the subject's conscious minds influencing the data in some way? <clears throat> well, we conclude that analytical overlay is taking place. Now, real quickly, analytical overlay, if the target was a fork and you analytically overlay, when you start seeing these images, your brain will start to fill in gaps to something you recognize. Like here, somebody, the target was a fork, somebody said, oh, it's a paintbrush. And you can see the similarity. Or somebody say, oh, it's a hand. I see the fingers on the hand. So this is analytical overlay. And we believe that this new process, based upon our data, can eliminate this analytical overlay, which is a problem in remote viewing. Uh, another big question is, where is Psy? We, we said, is the Psy in the judges or it's in the participants? Well, we had a control group that we also looked at to try and determine that. Here's the control group. Um, it was insignificant in a lot of cases. Uh, but there was significant significance um, in the remote viewing portion of the rasterized images. Uh, so group one, we had significant psi results. Group two, we had insignificant results. And in this control group, there was significant psi missing results. So is the psi with judges? Uh, we don't think so. There's a disparity in this group. And I think it points to the location of the psi being with the subjects being tested. Uh, that test, that control group Seymour, I'd like you to meet Seymour. Seymour is a uh, philodendron. It was actually provided to us by Brenda Dunn for another experiment in plant consciousness. But I had the plant there, so I, I went ahead and used Seymour. Um, so that was our control group. What does this mean? Well, maybe Seymour possesses a consciousness and is producing strongly significant psi missing results. I have no way of invalidating that possibility. Uh, one judge, there was one judge that knew who Seymour was. And maybe they influenced the judging with the subconscious belief that plants should exhibit sign missing. Um, I was that judge that knew that. I don't think that because that's not a belief I hold. Uh, the third one, Seymour results point to Psy not being with the judges, but rather with the, um, the significant patterns of the subjects and not the judges themselves. So in conclusion, um, remote viewing can be carried out in this manner. And we think we need to investigate this further to see how far we can actually take this. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. There's quite a bit of time for questions because you're early. Interesting work, Eric. Um, why 100 by 100? Why not 200 by 200? Why not 50 by 50? That image is completely arbitrary. There's, a, there's an infinite number of ways that we can create an image from the data. I had to pick one. So I said, OK, uh, 10 by 10, so that's a 100 you know, bit. There are, we can go back and we can start changing that and see, are there other images that pop up when we go to a large area, go to a circular rasterization? There are many different methods we could use. I had to pick one, so that I picked that one. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Question, what were your instructions to the uh, remote viewers in terms of what they were expected to produce? In my experience, you have several kinds of remote viewing. People that are more or less automatic in the handwriting and drawing. Others that are more visual. So what, was there any particular instruction you gave them as to what they should focus on? The specific instructions, when they sat down, I said, OK, for, for the group that had no experience with remote viewing, they'd never done it, they weren't, they weren't aware, I said, OK, there's a target in this, car, in this envelope. The target is, is a picture of a, a location or an object. What I want you to do is sit down, relax, and I want you to draw that image, or you can use descriptive wording to explain what that image is. What is that object? Um, some people, most people did a hand drawing of some sort, but there were a few, and one of my examples showed there was a drawing and there was words trying to describe what, what they were perceiving. Um, so I really left it up to them. There was only a few people that wanted to verbalize it instead of writing it down. Um, for those people, I, 
I took notes. I did not include that in the, the, the data that I, that I collected because it was kind of outside the bounds of how we were doing this. But really, I don't care about what they produced. I didn't, I, that part is the data I don't really care about. I cared about what the random number generator was producing. That's the data I was really interested in, and that's where we saw the most significant results. It's just a, a question of a possible confounding thing, and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about this, but I'll just throw it out, is that when you look at these uh, matrices that are, that are created, these image, images, that there may be more of a tendency to see one type of pattern than another, like the wavy lines, for example, just because it's easier to hedge your bets when you're looking at those things to say, okay, it's wavy than uh, any uh, other. I, I agree with what you're saying. When, I didn't include it in here, uh, when I looked at what the judges thought things were the, the most, what actually came up the most was cross. What came up second was square. I think that's a byproduct of, of it being a grid system. Of it, it's based upon squares and straight lines. Um, wavy lines actually didn't come up the most, and when it did, it was often a hit. So the circle, um, the, circle the wavy lines, they weren't chosen as often. Um, so, in, so part of that is, is what you're saying, whereas you know, the, how are you creating the image? I think that goes a long way with how the judgment is being done. So that is future work that needs to be looked into. Really interesting project. Um, I just wanted to bring up, in your um, abstract, you had mentioned being able to mitigate psi experimenter effect, and I would like to caution you against that because we don't know, you know, psi is non-spatial and non-temporal, that no matter what you do, psi can move anywhere and however it wants, so you really can't, I mean, I, you know, it's a really interesting project, like just leave it at that. Um, the other thing I would say is, you know, those were, each square in the grid was rather large and the dot was rather small, so there was so much white space. I would wonder if you made a bigger dot in each square, would, it, would a picture be more, um, would, would the participants, the judges? That's one of the things you can do after the fact as far as you have the images and they've been, they've been created. You can do forms of uh, image rendering which would fill in lines and, and start connecting dots are right next to each other, would connect them and then kind of blend them and uh, that could be done. It wasn't done primarily for time to get the experiment uh, finished, but that's definitely stuff in the future that I do want to look at. And then I would also caution you that you said, you know, I don't believe that I'm believing this, but you don't have any control over what you believe you believe, right? Cor if you're that's why I cannot eliminate it. Yeah, I don't exactly. think so, but I can't eliminate that possibility. Exactly. Roger, okay. Maybe you could also do machine judging by just have pattern, rec you've got a very simple set of uh, patterns there. That's on the books. Okay. To be done, yes. York. Along the same lines of uh, image processing that might make the um, the, the, the judge's job easier or a better fit to the human visual system um, rather than simply having a majority vote binary dot. Uh, suppose you filled in the raster in boxes in grayscale ranging from black for the pixel that got the most hits to white for the one that got the fewest. That's a, that's a great idea. That's something that I, that's another idea that we, we talked about. We couldn't get that implemented in code in time uh, to run it, but that's something that could be done afterwards once we, because we have all the data st uh, stored. So Eric, uh, just for a simple sanity check, I think you probably have done this. For these five pa patterns, um, I know Zeno cars are like almost identical to humans, mm -hmm. uh, but for the judge to check if the system has a bias, have you seen which card has the most hit? What kind of car, like, uh, is that a wave or a square has the most hit, or the almost the hit rate is almost equivalent for all the patterns? That's an issue I had with my data. I did look at that specifically at, at targets. One of the issues, and I say they randomly selected a target out of a stack of envelopes. Well, is that really random? I say no, based upon the number of targets. Three targets kept popping up the most. Um, in, in these experiments, so much so that it was significant how often they were chosen. Um, is that a problem? Yeah. In the future, I think we could use a random number generator to randomly select a target 
for them to look at. And I think that would kind of clean up some, some of that possible problem. Thank you very much, Eric.